Hello, good evening. It's uh, Adil Fazal here, market analyst at CFDs.com, bringing you a review of the U.S. markets for the uh, Monday, the 29th of February, 2016. Okay, interesting day. Let's start. Uh, where do we start? Where do we finish? But let's certainly uh, commence. Now, this video is being brought to you by CFDs.com. Be sure to visit www.cfds.com for your trading needs and certainly take advantage of that healthy bonus that's on offer. Alternatively, you can visit the uh, educational site www.cfds.education to certainly learn more. Okay. Right, in terms of US markets, let's look at the uh, actual close first of all for the US, certainly negative. The Dow down by 0.7%, uh, the S&P down 15 handles at 0.8% down lower, and the Nasdaq certainly came into uh, uh, selling uh, pressure as well, succumbed to selling pressure, even though uh, initially it certainly started off pretty well and uh, reached a pivot higher for 262 before it reversed quite sharply into the close. Okay, now. Uh, the uh, reasons or the events of uh, or the bearish arguments basically were that the Asian markets were down overnight, Shanghai down by almost 3%. Okay, we had the Nikkei down as well. Uh, we had a disappointment from the G20 in terms of any uh, policy coordination for uh, solving this, uh, this uh, growth uh, concern or lack of growth concern. Uh, now, also uh, in terms of stimulus as well, a lot of individuals are disappointed until... The uh, weaker inflation number out of the Eurozone certainly came out. That obviously helped the market, and obviously we had the Chinese rate cut. So that's the reason why we certainly rallied to a large extent up to 4260 before we started to reverse sharply on the news uh, later in the session with regards to Valiant. Valiant shares plunged 17% reports that, that says the company is under investigation by the SEC. Now, obviously, that causes the biotech sector to certainly get hit, and which in turn obviously causes the... Uh, the actual uh, Nasdaq to certainly come under pressure as well. So if I bring up the biotechs, you can see here, as soon as the Valiant News certainly hit the market, the market went into a swoon and certainly sold off quite sharply. Now, where we stop uh, is certainly anybody's guess in terms of the actual potential scandal. Uh, now, we do have gap fill, a bottom, double bottom support for the below that around the 2620 level, and that could be the zone for this uh, market to certainly uh, stop in terms of the selling pressure. So certainly take keep that, uh, obviously, uh, uh, in the back of your mind now. Also, we obviously we had weaker inflation data in the eurozone, which means more QE from Draghi, which in itself helps the market. And then obviously we had the uh, Chinese rate cut as well, which certainly helps the markets from a large perspective. From a large perspective, especially given the fact that they were disappointed with regards to a lack of uh, policy coordination from the G20 over the weekend. Okay, now not only that, we also had weaker data, so we had uh, weaker Chicago PMI. We had weaker uh, pending home sales data, and that obviously caused a risk of tone in the markets. Certainly challenged the status quo, i.e. the stronger GDP data on Friday. And that certainly did uh, weaken the dollar as well. Now, if I bring up the chart the US dollar index, let's just bring up a chart of the dollar here. Okay, so if you look at the dollar futures, you can see that we are holding that previous support equals resistance just around the Fib 61 to 75% resistance on the dollar index okay so therefore you are looking for potential weakness and further uh, for the market to certainly plunge potentially further uh, or the dollar itself to certainly fall the dollar falls we all know what happens in terms of the markets the usd jpy plunges usd jpy plunges then obviously we know what happens next i.e the stock market plunges and that's exactly what happened okay all right now let's see exactly what did the extent of the sell-off has called where this market is positioned or what, where we are at present now we're currently trading on the futures at 1930 region okay 1930 region to 1928 region is going to be 1932 to 1928 is going to be key why first of all you have this key diagonal trend line that's coming into play you have previous resistance equals support coming into play at 1928 so watch out for that zone if that were to go then the next support level is seen at um, 1902 down to which is gap fill and 200 ma at 1895 so back to 1895 now we do have this sort of higher highs and higher lows so we certainly need to respect that to a large extent if we take the pivot low take it to the pivot high you are still in that fib 50 percent to 38 percent retracement looking for a higher high given the fact that you have multiple unfilled gaps you have an unfilled gap at 2017 and you have an unfilled gap at 2043 to close so bear that in mind when uh, trading the S&P 500. But from a 10 minute chart perspective, certainly is coming under immense pressure uh, in terms of the S&P 500. Previous support equals resistance in this region now. Uh, in terms of support, we do have support here. 
and we have support here at the 1928 and down to the 1926 region on the S&P 500. We do have the 200 MA support and previous resistance equal support as well at this 1934 region. So we'll certainly watch out for that zone, okay? That's a zone that's going to be quite active and will be very interesting in terms of the uh, next move with regards to the uh, FTSE, or should we say the S&P 500, not the FTSE 100. Okay, now we have this diagonal trend line that certainly has been disrespected as well. So this market certainly is in a swoon. It certainly is in a downward momentum, okay? It certainly remains weak. Okay, so S&P 500 is zone from 1934 down to 1925. We are into a potential support zone. The daily chart of the S&P 500, we still are in a potential uptrend given the fact that we did take out that pivot high of 1946 and hit a pivot high of 1962 before we reverse quite sharply. So again, it's this key diagonal trend line and that's what we watch out for and be very, very careful for. Okay, now cross reference that with the Russell 2000 as always, we are into potential gap fill support in the Russell. Okay, we did break out to new highs, but that obviously high was rejected very quickly and the market started to swoon. Whether it's due to Valiant, whether it's due to weaker US data, again, we need to uh, uh, give it the benefit of the doubt. We'll see exactly how this market reacts. Now, the 10 minutes certainly is bearish at this current juncture. The 60 minute is all about previous resistance equals support. So this region here at 101. Uh, 102 will certainly come into to play uh, now the daily chart itself a topping tails certainly a warning sign and we still fail to comprehensively break out past this key resistance at the 103 so it isn't exactly a bullish signal but for now we shall see exactly how the asian markets respond now one of the reasons why i don't want to be too bearish is due to the shanghai the shanghai index on a daily chart has actually held double bottom support now double bottom support i added with a potential chinese rate cut which obviously has occurred already 0.5 basis points we basically are looking for a potential bottom to hold okay and if a bottom holds in the uh, shanghai then that means that global market is going to run it too the nikkei still remains within this bearish channel okay so again we will see exactly how the nikkei responds overnight now an important thing with regards to the nikkei is a yen now, if the yen is topping out here, you can see that we are holding gap fill resistance, okay? And you do have a potential for a HNS formation on the yen, given the fact this is your right shoulder gap fill now looking for the HNS to play out. That means that this market or global markets are now into potential support. The daily chart of the yen you can put in a double top, okay? And you can clearly see on the 60 minute chart you have a HNS formation. So then one would conclude that uh, the yen is now into potential uh, resistance and is putting a potential top and therefore you are looking for global markets to rally. Now we can cross reference that with the USD JPY. So let's move to the daily chart of the USD JPY. What do you see? You see a double bottom that's already been put in. So USD JPY certainly is confirming that a double bottom is, has been put in, in global markets given the fact that the Shanghai is putting a double bottom. The USD JPY is putting a double bottom and therefore you are looking for a potential for us to move higher. Therefore, bulls are in control. Now, I will confirm that I am long the euro stocks and my bias does remain bullish. So I just do need to declare my obviously uh, my my existing trades at this current juncture. And obviously that can distort my analysis and my and my own personal bias in this market. But for the way in which I'm explaining it to you folks is the USD JPY into support. Yen is in, certainly into resistance. And based on that information, we are looking to potentially move higher. Okay, right. And also bear in mind, you've got Chinese rate cut and you've got weaker inflation data, which means more QE from the Eurozone and the Euro itself is currently trading at the 10880 region, which in itself is obviously a risk on barometer, a barometer, should I say, because it's actually signaling to you that investors are looking to embrace risk and the markets are going to move higher. Okay, right. Uh, okay, in terms of the, uh, uh, the actual Russell, you can clearly see that uh, uh, this is the Russell 2000, which we've already observed. Let's bring up the Russell 3000. If I can just bring that for you, bear with me. Okay, here we go. Russell 3000. Okay, so 10 minutes certainly into support, 60 minute chart. You are into previous resistance equals support. So, again, a potential zone to watch out for. Okay, folks. You do have support further down below at 112 as well, so that certainly is another zone to uh, observe. The daily chart, it, it, you've broken out to new highs. You did retest and we have pushed slightly lower, so certainly a concern there. 
in terms of the uh, 10 minute chart of the Russell 3000 again like I said that's into 200 MA support so looking at potential support there okay now the cross referencing with the Wilshire with the, the Wilshire itself on the one hour chart you can see with potential put brewing a inverted head and shoulders 10 minutes certainly is in no man's land in terms of the next move itself on the daily chart you clearly see that we have this inverted head and shoulders given the fact that the yen is topping out that inverted head and shoulders formation should start to turn bullish and should send global markets higher okay so that certainly is going to be very very important okay now bringing up the chart of the dow now the dow jones okay the dow jones going to a daily chart uh, you can certainly see that we really are in a um in, in a very confusing spot and uh, there's no real conviction here in terms of the markets other than chop so you are still in the potential uptrend given the fact that we took out the previous higher high okay and uh, certainly this 10 trend line will certainly come into play now going to a 60 minute chart on the dow itself you are into that diagonal trend line support so watch out for that potential zone now cross-referencing that with the dow transportation average looking at the daily chart the dow transports you are holding that previous support equals resistance so certainly an impressive move there uh, the 60 minute chart itself of the uh, transports potential double top and therefore potentially signaling weakness so again that certainly is a, a zone that we need to watch very very carefully in terms of the next move in this marketplace okay now the actual uh, alternative markets now is in nasdaq which i'll quickly bring up for you and certainly demonstrate uh, this is the biotech you clearly see that we have a potential inverted head and shoulders brewing as well if yen can start to potentially make a bottom and we are coming into support on the biotechs given the valiant shares uh, we're down 17 percent so certainly hurt that sector 60 minute chart of the biotech certainly is bullish and we remain in an uptrend and the buyers certainly remains uh, bullish from my perspective given the fact that we've made a new high and you are looking at testing this key area of support on the daily chart you certainly have pushed higher close the gap yes you put in a topping tail but there's certainly nothing stopping from closing the gaps certainly higher so again that's certainly another index that we're certainly going to watch out for uh, look, bringing up the chart of the Nasdaq now, the 10 minute chart, you are into that 200 MA support. Okay, on the 10 minute chart, 60 minute chart, diagonal trend line support as well. So, certainly looking for the uh, the markets to push higher. Given the fact that we are making higher highs and higher lows, you are into that 50% support zone now on the Nasdaq, 50 to 61%, and certainly looking to uh, potentially move higher. Okay. So from my perspective, the markets certainly are set up uh, and certainly set up to potentially move higher, especially given the fact that the IHS formation certainly are dominant now. Clearly see it on the, uh, in the NASDAQ as well. You are retesting that neckline and therefore one would presume that you are looking to potentially f f formulate some sort of bottom and then obviously start to, to rally on the upside. So again, that certainly is something, some certain food to thought or food for thought. OK, so the S&P 500, interesting scenario. OK, let's go back to the S&P interesting scenario daily chart consolidating 60 minute chart into diagonal trend line support and a 10 minute chart certainly has pierced at 200 ma and is into horizontal support very soon so therefore looking to potentially move higher and that certainly seems to be the case with regards to us markets now again weaker data weaker data certainly has hurt the sentiment on the uh, the actual uh, us markets to a large extent okay certainly has questioned the gdp numbers but then the alternative other way of looking at it is the fact that weaker data certainly supports the argument that there won't be any rate rises and obviously bad news is good news and that's the philosophy that the market certainly is embracing right now so again that certainly is another way of looking at this market okay now we're breaking it down to looking at the financials with regards to the s p 500 we certainly have held this resistance line the 60 minute chart the daily chart itself uh, you are looking at potentially closing the gap above so certainly take take that into consideration with regards to the uh, actual financials 10 minute chart at the moment yes we flush with the rest of the market you but you are into that 200 ma support which will be crucial uh, with regards to the next move in this marketplace okay now looking at the energy sector 10 minute chart certainly remains weak 60 minute chart itself again certainly is in the weak zone although you do have this diagonal trend line support that will come into play right now and looking for a potential bounce okay the daily chart itself still consolidating around this resistance zone whether we can get past this is the potential real test in this market okay that's the energy sector now uh, other sectors we can observe but the energy and the financials really are the two mainstay and the two markets that are really dictating the potential move in this uh, 
index at present. Given the fact that the dollar is into resistance on the daily chart, again, that can have several uh, reactions to the market itself, especially given the fact that the market, certainly, especially US markets, are fixated on this strong dollar theme at present, which obviously sends the euro lower and sends the yen lower, which in turn inflates global equities. So, again, that certainly is something to consider as well. Okay, so from my perspective, US markets certainly seem to be oversold, looking for a potential bounce going into tomorrow, provided the Asian markets are stable and we have stronger economic data and the sentiment remains bullish from a large perspective, i.e. there's no overtly bearish news, okay, uh, with regards to the market. Now, the bearish news from Valiant certainly has been uh, discounted in. The weaker US data has been discounted in. And uh, the uh, two main themes will be Chinese rate court and obviously the uh, ECB uh, launching additional QE. And that certainly seems to be what every investor is fixated on, especially given the fact that European markets are trading in a bullish nature. OK, I think that's a market wrap now. Be sure to visit CFTs.com for your trading needs. And they are the leading specialists in spread betting and brokerage. Goodbye now.